We're next going to look at the issue of the long-run aggregate supply curve. Now, in terms of dealing with this, you've got to think, what do we mean by the long run there? And not, not all economists were going to necessarily agree as to where the long run lies. So there's certain things that maybe we should bear in mind uh, as we look at it. Um, in terms of that long run aggregate supply curve, it is pretty much the same thing as the production possibility frontier. In the sense that if you look at the PPF, we're saying any point on this production possibility frontier may be producing, say, for the UK's economy, it's, it's, it's macro, we're not looking at firms, the big picture, so we're looking at the UK's production possibility frontier. Any point on this PPF we say is full employment, yeah? And we may be producing, say, capital products, capital goods and services, or consumer uh, goods and services. Yes, it's UK's national production, right? So it could be we're producing goods for the wealthy and low income groups. Uh, you know, there's the different ways we look at it. It's interesting to look at capital goods because it does get us into talking about investment. So for the United Kingdom, we could be saying, and these are not accurate figures, but we could say, for example, um, the UK produces, let's say, 0.5 trillion pounds of capital goods, so that's looking at uh, machinery, tools, new factories, new buildings, new capital being built. And maybe we produce something like 1.5 uh, trillion pounds worth of consumer goods and services. So there we're talking about maybe um, processed food, we're talking about maybe the leisure, leisure entertainment industry, financial services. Uh, so, you know, the kind of big growth areas that have been the case for Britain's economy. So we've got, we're saying here that we've got, say, a £2 trillion economy if we have everyone in full employment, all our businesses, factories running at full capacity. Um, you know, we have full employment here. We don't, we're not in a situation inside the PPF where we'd say we'd have spare capacity idle resources, people being unemployed, that's people who are willing and able to work, nor have we got a situation out here which we'd say is unobtainable given our current resources. So this idea of the PPF is what we're showing here when we talk about the long run aggregate supply curve. That was saying in terms of the UK's economy, real GDP if at this point in time, everyone in the workforce, say around 26 you know, million uh, people, were all in work, given the current levels of uh, capital and machinery and tools, um, the current uh, land space we've got put to productive use, the current sort of entrepreneurial ideas, all those people going to work would generate at this point in time a full employment level of say, two trillion pounds. Again, these are not exact figures. Um, what it means then is, is something else as well. We're saying full employment. So what do we mean by someone being fully employed? It doesn't actually mean every single person's got a job out there. Uh, if we remember, we talk about the uh, employed and the unemployed in the workforce. So we are saying that maybe, give it beyond six months, um, those people who haven't been willing to work at the going market wage rate, can we call those people genuinely willing to work? Are they still genuinely part of the workforce? Um, maybe some people who, who've not been able to work um, for, for different reasons. Uh, maybe, they, you know, questions of uh, disability benefits as well. You know, do we count these people as well as part of the workforce? So, by saying full employment, we're most probably talking about not those people who we'd say are long-term unemployed or voluntary unemployed, not those people unable or unwilling to work. And we could even stretch it out to say, well, maybe also those people have been discriminated against in the workplace as well. Um, so we are saying that. We're also saying, of course, there will, be, there will be people in between jobs, what we call frictionally unemployed as well. Okay, so you've got to have a bit more of a looser interpretation, but we're kind of saying here we are at our productive capacity point. 
And that means that in terms of the long run scenario, wherever aggregate demand lies, that will determine our rate of inflation. Yeah, our kind of general inflationary pressures. And this is where very, you know, pure monetarists would say that looking at the long term, when markets have done their business, when markets have cleared, uh, when anyone who in the labour market is willing to work at the going market wage rate has got a job, yeah, the rest have priced themselves out of the labour market, it's a very tough position to say, well tough, we're no longer going to count you as unemployed. In that scenario they're saying then, the only really role for maybe government, or government's giving that role to the Bank of England, is to alter that level of aggregate demand and thereby change the level of inflation. This kind of very pro-market view assumes that it is only business uh, in the long term which create jobs, which create prosperity, rather than government. Um, it's a very tough position to take, uh, and it's been the case why they've argued in the past for, say, increases in interest rates, or maybe cuts in government spending to get inflationary pressures lower in Britain.